fundamentalism is one of the key issues that will be discussed in this video. The base of fundamentalism can be explained using these key characteristics. The sacred text is a belief in the absolute authority of religious texts or teachings of a particular religious leader. The Fundamentals was a series of books published in the 1920s. This is where the concept of fundamentalism was first introduced. When fundamentalism was first introduced, it mainly referred to Protestant Christians, but in later years it was used to describe the most extreme believers of every religion in the world. Premillennialists see no point in trying to confer others into their beliefs because they believe the world is doomed until Jesus returns and defeats the Antichrist. Postmillennialists believe that spiritual and moral reform would lead to a millennial, after which Christ would return. Islamic fundamentalists are the same as other fundamentalists, but in contrast refer to the movement of Muslims rather than Christians. Anthony Giddens identified five key characteristics of fundamentalism. He suggested that they seek tradition and traditional belief systems, that they believe that their view is considered the only true view of the world, and they justify this view using extracts from sacred texts. They tend to try and avoid those who have other views to their own. They rely on guardians of religion to interrupt sacred texts and lay down the rules to determine their own lifestyle. A key Protestant Christian fundamentalist group is the Westboro Baptist Church. What's wrong with this country and England and the world is that they have bought Satan's lie that it's okay to be gay. Our message is it's not okay to be gay. It will warp the mind, destroy the soul, and damn the, na damn the nation. Westboro Baptist Church of Topeka is an old school or primitive Baptist church. You know, he's, he's quite a showman, and he knows that. They've gotten a big, long run out of this. Make a God hates facts. That's all you gotta do. This generation teaches their children it is, in fact, okay to be gay. That is a lie. The Westboro Baptist Church was founded in 1955 by Fred Phelps, who served as a pastor for many years. Even after his death, his extended family were believed to constitute most of the membership. The church claimed that its theology was based on strict interpretation of Calvinist principles. The Westboro Baptist Church then began picketing at funerals in 1991. They tended to picket at the funerals of homosexual people. For example, Matthew Shepard, a gay college student who was mur whose murder was widely condemned as a hate crime. In 2005, church members began picketing at the funerals of US soldiers and held signs that said, Thank God for dead soldiers and God hates the USA. Moving on to one of the most modern examples of Islamic fundamentalism and terrorism. This is ISIS. ISIS was formed in 2013. Before this, ISIS put forward their ideas to Al-Qaeda, but the violence perpetrated by ISIS was considered too extreme, so it was rejected. Since 2013, ISIS has become one of the main jihadist groups fighting against government in Syria and Iraq. ISIS is not an independent religion, it is an exaggerated ideology, fundamentalist reflection of Islamic principles. They believe that they are the legitimate defender of Islam. ISIS has subjected people to horrifying execution methods that include beheading, burning and throwing victims from rooftops. These horrific punishments are typically for crimes like adultery, homosexuality and, most prominently, defiance of religious scripture. As ISIS inflated their profile through mainstream media over the past few years, the success of their recruiting efforts have become increased. In 2015, ISIS increased over 20,000 converts the group is implementing Sharia law, rooted in 18th century Islam, to establish a society that mirrors the region's ancient past. ISIS is a very extreme example of how fundamentalism, in some cases, can be taken to the extreme. The Finsbury Park attack is an example of terrorism that has occurred in recent years. Just after midnight, 
This footage, filmed by an eyewitness, was recorded moments after a van mounted the pavement and struck several pedestrians. The streets had been filled with worshippers who had just left evening prayers at the Finsbury Park Mosque and the nearby Muslim welfare house. The Finsbury Park attack was a terrorist attack carried out by a white male near the Finsbury Park Mosque in North London on the 19th of June 2017. The incident began when a 48-year-old white man drove over the curb outside the Muslim welfare house as people were leaving nearby prayer services and breaking Ramadan fast, leaving one person dead and 10 injured. Within minutes of the attack, it was labelled a terrorist attack as the attacker was reported saying, I want to kill Muslims, I want to kill Muslims. A key issue surrounding the topic of terrorism is the way in which the media portrays different groups slash individual terrorists. Society labels Muslim extremists terrorists instantly, yet prefers to refer to white extremists as mentally ill. Why is this seen as socially acceptable? So here we are again talking about how crazy it is that when a mass shooter or a bomber is white, the media jumps to call him a lone gunman or blame mental issues. But if he's brown or Muslim or anything else, boom, terrorist. I'm not race baiting here, nor am I saying what's being committed by brown people isn't terrorism, but the disparity of the coverage is a fact. Terror attacks perpetrated by Muslims got 449% more media coverage than when the perpetrator is of any other faith. Muslims label terrorists, why white people labelled mentally ill. Here we have newspaper articles from both white extremists and Muslim extremists. The words used to describe the terrorists differ depending on race. We have white people labelled as a jobless lone wolf and saying they suffered from depression, whereas ISIS are labelled terrorists straight out. Key differences in media portrayal. One, white terrorists are labelled troubled loners, while other, whilst other terrorists are always suspected of being part of a global plot, even when they're obviously troubled loners. Two, the family of the white terrorist is always interviewed, weeping as they wonder what went wrong. The families of other terrorists are almost never interviewed. White terrorists are never called white, but other terrorists are always given ethnic applications. It seems the way the media portrays terrorism affects the way society views terrorists. To sum up, fundamentalism refers to the strict worshipping of religious texts that are sacred. The views are considered to be the complete truth to those who have faith. Islamic fundamentalism is very similar to fundamentalism but refers to Muslim believers rather than Protestant Christians who worship the Quran. Religious terrorism can be the result of fundamentalism getting out of hand and becoming the most extreme. It relates to trying to harm others who do not have the same views and beliefs as yours as a sort of mission on God's behalf. 